this fall. CBS 47 News, 7 and 11. Your seven-minute non-stop news block starts right now. Tonight, we're tracking Faye as it winds its way up the state and closer to the first coast. In a bizarre twist, Faye actually gained strength after raking over parts of southern and central Florida. You're looking at damage now in Brevard County. That's from a tornado that touched down as Faye moved through central Florida this afternoon. I'm Don Lopez. And I'm John O'Connor. We'll be taking you live to Brevard County here in just a couple of minutes. But in the meantime, parts of our viewing area are under hurricane, tornado, and flood watches right now. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burge, of course, keeping his eye on things over in the First Alert Weather Center. Michael, you got some new numbers just a few minutes ago, right? Right. The National Hurricane Center sending out the new numbers just in the last few minutes. And Faye continues to weaken over land now, but of course not far from the Atlantic either. Here's that swirl of Faye, which is over southern Florida. I like to say smelling the warm water of the Atlantic now as it's trying to jump to the coast. The eye still very well developed through about 7, 8 o'clock this evening, but is really degraded within the last, oh, just a couple of hours. Now, it looks like a new eye has opened up there, or it's a large eye. Well, that's not really the case. The eye has just completely shut down. It's caved in on the north and east side. Now, it's still there. It's the center of the storm appears to be right at the tip of my finger. Okay, about right there, just west of Interstate 95, south of Melbourne by about 30 miles or so, and headed east-northeast. It's only got about another 25 miles before it's on the beaches here in the intercoastal and then headed out into the Atlantic. So I'd say somewhere between roughly 1 and 6 a.m. This makes it out over the water. The question then becomes the track and especially the intensity. It's not a simple forecast, that's for sure. Movement now north-northeast at 5 miles per hour. These are the new numbers from the National Hurricane Center. Winds are down to just a moderate tropical storm now, 50 mile per hour winds. The pr pressure is still quite low and conditions overall are conducive for strengthening, but it needs to get off land in order for that to happen. It's just under 200 miles south of Jacksonville. So here's the new forecast track, and it's really quite similar to the previous one, except it brings it in instead of about Ponte Vedra, about St. Augustine. This track will change, no doubt, several times between now and Thursday, and reality in the end could be really quite different. It is suffice to say, however, that we will have impacts from Faye, whether a strong tropical storm or a hurricane, as it heads back inland, the key on the intensity, how long it stays out over the Atlantic and when that turn back to the west northwest occurs. Bottom line is heavy rain the next few days. Some places could see a half foot or more. Increasing winds not terribly bad at all tomorrow. Pick up a lot by Thursday. Tomorrow is a preparation day. Isolated tornadoes will be a possibility and of course all are dependent on the exact track and strength of the storm. So for tomorrow here's what you need to do. Stay calm. Take objects outside that can be easily blowing around inside. Top off your gas tanks. Check batteries. Put aside some old clothing, towels and shoes. Maybe make some extra ice. Bottom line, though, is try to make yourself self-sufficient before, during, and after the storm. Complete first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thanks, Jim. Mike. We'll see you in a few. Well, Mayor John Payton and other city leaders are concerned about the dangers that Faye could bring to the First Coast. Despite the concern, city leaders say that they are ready. CBS 47's Alyssa Trussell is live outside of the Emergency Operations Center downtown. And Alyssa, they say come 7 o'clock in the morning, EOC will be fully operational. That's right. They're going to be elevating this to the next level, the highest level possible. Actually, right now, the mayor is about to come down and talk to us. I just want to go ahead and tell you a couple things that we know right now. First of all, the mayor talking about that we could get a direct hit right here on the first coast, which could mean a storm surge and massive power outages, possibly worse than we've seen in years. That could mean outages for days. Also, widespread flooding. Anyone in low-lying areas are encouraged to relocate. The EOC, like you said, is operating at a level two now, but could be elevated to a level one starting tomorrow morning. That's also when we could learn the latest on storm shelters, whether those will open, where and when. But of course, we're going to hear much more from the mayor. He's going to be coming down here in just a little while. But first, let's go ahead and let you hear what he had to say earlier today. Faye is on its way. The threat we're facing is much more significant than we've seen throughout the state. And Jacksonville's mayor is on high alert, warning people Faye's fury could pack a powerful punch right here on the first coast. We're going to take seriously the notion of a Category 1 storm hitting Jacksonville early Thursday, uh, with most of the intensity being experienced throughout the day. With powerful winds anticipated, he says it's likely Mother Nature could knock down trees and power lines, causing power outages worse than what people experienced during the 2004 busy storm season. In 2004, during the hurricane season, we experienced outages up to nine days. Uh, we think it's smart to consider having the necessary supplies, water, batteries, 
you know, non-perishable foods, should we have significant power outages uh, for a duration of time. He also encourages people to be ready to move in the event Faye brings floodwaters. We think the best strategy at this point is for those people that are in low-lying areas that have experienced flooding historically, they should consider relocating. One option for families may be schools. Right now, classes in Duval County are canceled through Thursday just in case the city needs those buildings to set up shelters. And once again, we're standing by. The mayor could be coming in here and talking to us with the next hour. We will bring that to you once he comes down here. Reporting live downtown, Alyssa Trussell, CBS 47 News. All right, thanks, Alyssa. Well, as Faye continues to take her kind of slow march now up and across the state, Governor Charlie Crist is turning his attention to us here on the First Coast. In a press conference earlier today, he urged everyone in Northeast Florida to be cautious and to get prepared. This storm obvious, obviously has strengthened. Uh, as we uh, mentioned earlier, it looks like it will become a hurricane, uh, and that hurricane would uh, potentially approach the St. Augustine area. So I would urge the citizens in that part of the state to be ready. And the entire state of Florida remains under a state of emergency tonight. Schools in Duval County are all closed tomorrow and Thursday. That word coming late this afternoon. In St. Johns County, all after-school activities have been canceled. Also, some local private schools and pre-Ks have also closed because of the storm. Now, we're running a list of the school closings. You'll see that, that crawl across the bottom of your screen, and you can uh, reference that and check that throughout the course of the entire newscast. In the past 24 hours now, Faye has grabbed the attention of folks all over the River City. Yeah, as this thing gets a little bit closer, folks are starting to head into the grocery stores now and to stock up on enough supplies to weather this one. CBS 47's Carl Torp has more and how folks here on the First Coast are starting to get ready now. Carl. Yeah, it was yesterday we were asking folks all over town about this storm and they really didn't think it was going to affect us here on the First Coast. Just a little bit of rain and a little bit of wind. Well, of course, all that changed today and we're outside of a wind dixie here off of Beach Boulevard. This place has been packed pretty much all evening long as folks get ready for this storm. It floods bad every single time. The reputation of McCoy's Creek has folks here headed for higher ground. But what's the plan of attack here? Leave. We don't have one. Leave. But Horace King isn't going anywhere. I'll stay here because if I leave my house, it won't be good. Yeah. So you're yeah. going to stay and protect what you got, I guess? Yeah. Horace's home is one of the closest to the creek, and if Faye packs a major punch, it will be one of the first to flood. Tomorrow, uh, I won't be in a rowboat. Near the ocean, Faye brings fear of winds. The Neptune Beach Police Department is one of the first to cover up. We bought these window shields about three years ago, and we've never used them, but uh, it looks like this may be the first good, good test we get of them. All these boards back here. Michelle Delaney says she's only had to put up her plywood boards, once before. Even the threat of a hurricane has her thinking positively. I've lived here my whole life, and uh, I think people are just getting worked up, you know. I think it'll be fun. People at the grocery store think they have good reason to get worked up and stocked up on supplies. Water, batteries, you know, storable food, food that we can put in our cabinets so that won't go bad. Meanwhile, Horace King and the rest of Jacksonville wait for Faye's fury. I'm going to the roof, tie myself to the chimney, it ain't going nowhere. Back here live now at the south side, this is the Wind dixie and things are finally starting to slow down this evening. We see a couple of folks walking out with uh, water and other beverages. Uh, I can tell you that this Wind dixie out here on Beach Boulevard pretty much stocked with all the water, all the batteries, and we've seen that from a lot of stores out there tonight. They seem to have supplies. I can't tell you about the generators. Not sure those are usually the ones that go, go first. But as far as some of the grocery items, it looks like the stores still have plenty of supplies. Now, we did also talk to folks today, and they tell us, you know, that if this thing does bear down on us as a Cat 1 hurricane, they will be the first to get in their cars and get out of town. And, and that is a, a big difference from what we heard yesterday from folks. Reporting live from the South Side, I'm Carl Torp, CBS 47 News. Carl, thanks. Sometimes those other beverages can really help you get through the storm as a matter of fact you can understand why folks are stocking up on that too well our team coverage of Faye continues right after the break we'll take you live to Cocoa Beach where they've been seeing some action Faye is giving Florida all it can handle I'm Drew Levinson in Cocoa Beach Florida the latest on the tropical storm coming up and Mike Burrish, of course, keeping an eye on everything from the First Alert Weather Center. Here, help. He will have another update in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Her car was almost paid in full. Would you send? 
It's the storm that just won't give Florida a break. Yeah, tonight Faye continues to churn her way across the Sunshine State and get a little bit closer to us. CBS 47's Drew Levinson joining us live now from Cocoa Beach. And Drew, I was just asking Chief Meteorologist Mike Burris during the break, you guys are really on the wrong side of this storm right about now. We are getting pounded, and what you're seeing right now, John and Don, what you're seeing with this hard rain coming down, the heavy winds behind me, it has been this way now for the past few hours, and it is not letting up at all. It really, this tropical storm, Faye, really is wreaking havoc on this state. Faye is fickle and feisty. Despite being over land, the tropical storm is gaining strength. It's lashing out with drenching rain and dangerous winds. 65 mile an hour gusts spawned several tornadoes. One ripped the roofs off homes on the state's east coast. My life flashed before my eyes. Helen Farragamo was hunkered down in her daughter's room. All of a sudden the roof just came off and flying. And flying glass and everything just started flying around and everything just it just went. The rain is a big problem. Parts of this state have already flooded, and some areas along the Atlantic coast could receive as much as 15 inches of rain. This is what it looks like from the International Space Station. It is a big, powerful storm that forecasters predict will likely turn into a hurricane. Florida's Everglades provided the fuel Faye needed to intensify. It's expected to pick up even more strength after it moves out into the Atlantic early Wednesday. Forecasters expect it to boomerang back to the Florida coast. I do want to remind everybody that uh, in, remembering going back uh, to 2005 uh, when Katrina made its first landfall in southeast Florida, that storm also strengthened as it passed through uh, Miami and into the Everglades. Nearly 60,000 Floridians are without power. It's going to be an extra dark night, not knowing what a new day will bring. And this rain and the winds, they're both going to continue throughout the night and as steady as, it, as you can see it right now. John, Don, back to you guys in Jacksonville. Hey, Drew, what about evacuations? They're only a couple of ways out of Cocoa Beach. You can take 520 or 528. Were there evacuations today? Uh, no, we did not see any evacuations coming out of this area. When we were in the Keys uh, a couple of days ago, yes, there were those evacuations. But I think this thing came across so quickly, John, that the people really didn't even have an opportunity to get out. Most of the people just hunkered down in their homes. So we'll have to see, as you mentioned earlier, what the day will bring come tomorrow. Thanks, you Drew. You guys are going to get it eventually, yeah. All, All right. right. Drew Levinson and Cocoa Beach tonight. Well, here, back at home, many people along the coast certainly aren't taking this hurricane watch lightly. Down on Jacksonville Beach, we caught up with some people who have already started battening down the hatches. CBS 47's Jason Davis is live at the Intracoastal right now. And Jason, you spoke with some local boaters, some of them who live on their boat at the marina. Yes, I did talk to some local boaters out here and some people living along the coastline. And while they're preparing for Faye, they're still taking a wait and see approach when it comes to tracking the hurricane or the storm rather. You know, I'm trying not to underreact, but not to overreact either. But one thing's for sure, David Ham is reacting to save his property. With reinforced windows and hurricane tarps, he's like many people living here at the Sea Winds condo on Jacksonville Beach, who recently bought these items to prepare themselves for hurricane season that are supposed to hold like 100, 120 mile an hour winds, but uh, so we've made it optional for the residents here, but uh, I'm putting it on just so I don't have to move all my patio furniture inside to keep from blowing away. And for many who live on the water, it was a busy day prepping for Faye. But, uh, we've done everything we can do, you know, best we can do is, uh, is get it ready for it. After removing loose objects from this vessel and tying down everything in sight, Scott Wilson says he's having second thoughts about a recent decision to live full time on his boat. It may not have been a good time to, to, to follow that dream, but yeah, we've been living on the boat and having fun with it, but we're not going to stay on the boat for the hurricane, that's for sure. And neither is Ryan Maxwell, who says his boat is battle tested. The guy we bought it from has been through three hurricanes. He stayed on it in the last one down in Key West, which I think the guy was a complete nut job. <laughs> Now, there's nothing nutty about preparing for the event of a monster storm, rather. And just like you saw the guy there, I'm sure as the storm possibly heads this way, you can expect to see many people out here in the marina and along the coastline preparing. Reporting from the Intercoastal, Jason Davis, CBS 47 News. Okay, Jason, thanks a lot. We'll see you later. Now, your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mike Burns.
this storm has been called unpredictable, yeah. Yeah. erratic. Very soon we could be calling it historic. Yeah, it, it's the amazing thing is the track. I mean, this will be the fourth landfall as it comes back to the U.S. It's not out of the question if it happens to manage to get across Florida again going back west that it could make a fifth landfall in the Gulf mm. You mean Coast. over the Gulf and then over to the yeah, Gulf Coast. So mm. this is... Uh, more than anything else, just a, a crazy long-lasting storm, no doubt. Let's check uh, at what you can do to help us out here at CBS 47. If you see weather occurring and manage to snap a picture, or if you need to send me a message, rainfall amounts would be great, wind estimates, any damage, all you need to do is email it right here to weather at CBS47.com. Again, that address, that email address, weather at CBS47.com, so we can track this storm even better for you using your eyes out there in the field. All right, check it. Look, uh, first alert Doppler right now, and you can see Faye as it heads northeastward now across South Florida. As I like to say, it is smelling the warm water of the Atlantic Ocean. That center of the storm is getting awfully close now to the Atlantic. Now the eye has really deteriorated during the last several hours. It was still a very well-developed tropical cyclone with winds not far from hurricane strength a few hours ago, but the eye since has opened up. It's essentially really collapsed, so it's losing a lot of its structure right now, and that's important in the intensification process later tonight and during the day tomorrow. It's going to have to go through at least some reorganization before it can actually intensify, so it makes the intensity forecast especially problematic. But the center appears to be about right there. It is just west of Interstate 95, about 30, 25, 30 miles south of Melbourne, and will work east-northeastward off the coast within the next few hours, somewhere probably between 1 and 6 a.m., it then heads off the coast and into the warmer waters of the western Atlantic. There's no rain over the viewing area right now, but look at this. Off to the south and east, there's some yellow there. I'll get us a little closer look, and you'll be able to see some of the showers and the thunderstorms as they continue to work their way to the north and west and the outer bands of this storm, generally just to the southeast of St. Augustine. You can see the heavy rain now as it's moving just south of Flagler County, just flat south of Flagler Beach through Daytona, and that'll try to work northward. I still think it's pretty scattered later tonight, but the best chance will be near and south of St. Augustine, maybe up to the south side of Jacksonville for some briefly heavier rain showers. And then these bands will try to work in tomorrow, though I still think even during the day tomorrow, it's not going to be a bad preparation day. We will get some on and off showers and storms, some bands that will produce gusty winds, maybe even an isolated tornado. But the bulk of this should hold off until a little later in the day and then into, of course, tomorrow night and Thursday. So here are the latest numbers from the Hurricane Center. Movement is north northeast at five miles per hour. Centered about just a little bit under 200 miles south, southeast of Jacksonville and working its way to the north northeast at about five miles per hour. At times, a little bit more of a drift east. At times, a little bit more of a drift toward the north. The forecast continues to take it offshore late tonight into tomorrow morning where it has that opportunity to strengthen once it reorganizes with a potential landfalling hurricane then near and just to the south of Jacksonville. Here are the windfall probabilities and realize this is the risk of a wind, the percentage probability of the wind reaching 39 miles per hour or stronger. Tropical storm force, and those numbers are now high, ranging from generally 50 to 60 to 70 percent across the viewing area. That is statistically significant considering that Almost all days throughout the year, you have 0% chance of having winds like that. And here's a close-up view of that projected track, which has been shifted just ever so slightly, about 20 to 30 miles south of the earlier forecast, and realize that this will likely shift some more. In reality, it will shift a little bit more, too, when that time gets here. And don't focus so much on the center of the storm or that line, because effects, adverse effects will occur wide from the center of that storm. And there is, again, that potential for forecast error, too. And then on to the west into the northwest with the most intense part of the hurricane on the north and northeast side. So if this forecast path verifies, there's going to be some issues here on the first coast. And that's why a hurricane watch is in effect from north of Brunswick, Coastal Glen and Camden counties in Georgia through Nassau, Duval, St. John's and northern Flagler County in Florida. There are inland hurricane wind watches in effect as well. Flood watches for the entire viewing area, all of southeast Florida, uh, southeast Georgia and northeast Florida and a tornado watch for some of those bands that might try to get up into southern parts of the viewing area the next few hours, St. John's, Putnam and Flagler County under tornado watches. So for northeast Florida, Uly to Jacksonville, down to Middleburg and Green Cove Springs and Penny Farms to the World Golf Village to Palatka to Rayford, Lake Butler, Lake City, Olusty, Sanderson, McClenny, and areas in between. Heavy rain at times tomorrow, especially tomorrow night into Thursday night. Isolated tornadoes, gusty winds, and that potential for downed trees and power lines. The coastal areas, much the same story. Isolated water spouts, rip currents, a very serious 
uh, risk at the beaches. Surf building to 8 to 12 feet. It will be a rough surf. Onshore winds, so it won't be clean wave action. And there'll be waves on top of that surf that make it even higher. Rough seas and surf, no doubt. Boaters should need to stay in port. In southeastern Georgia, the effects may be a little later, but still strong. Wednesday night into Thursday with gusty winds, isolated tornadoes, and that potential for downed trees and power lines. Temperatures right now are in the mid to upper 70s. We have a northeast breeze near 10 miles per hour. And anytime those showers move through, you could get some gustier winds. Tomorrow, we're into the mid 80s. It'll be breezy, on and off showers, a few thunderstorms, heavy downpours, gusty winds, still that isolated tornado threat, but not a complete stormy day. Point being, you've got some time to prepare tomorrow as well, though you need to push those plans into action. Hurricane watch in the boating forecast. Gusty northeast winds, those seas building with a high rip current risk. Even if you consider yourself an experienced swimmer, good surfer, take extra caution out there. I know you're going to want to try to test that water no matter what I say. It starts to heat up by Friday and into the weekend as the spay moves away and we become uh, get into a more typical summertime pattern. The skies become partly sunny with just some scattered afternoon and evening showers and storms. It'll turn hotter with temperatures back up to around 90 degrees. Of course, you can tune in CBS 47 first thing tomorrow morning and on and off throughout the day. Log on to CBS47.com. First Alert Weather Center will be continuing almost continuous updates tonight through the day tomorrow. Updates as new information comes in. Really, the key is going off the coast with Faye, where it heads and how quickly it intensifies is for its ultimate effects right here on the first coast for us. Right. right. Still the waiting game. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. The First Alert weather team is tracking Faye around the clock, just as Mike said. For updates, though, any time of day, go to CBS47.com. Or you can always call the First Alert weather hotline at 997-7737. Well, the Jags prepare for the weather and, of course, for another game. And just about every player hoping for a better performance than last week, including the Jags' second-round pick. And the Rays are for real. But their manager is really mad tonight. Brett has that story next. Now, sports on CBS 47, your official Jaguar station. The next game won't count, but it's going to count for them because they definitely want to come out and show the fans that they're going to be a little bit better team than we saw against the if Dolphins. If they cooperate. Yeah, yeah if, they co if they can get across the state to Tampa, which might be a good place to well, be this week, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Rookie Quentin Groves got his first start on Saturday night, and like everyone else on the Jags, you could hardly tell he was out there. You know what? Don't expect the defensive end to be Paul Spicer in game number two of his career, but he'll get there perhaps. The Jags are throwing a lot at the kid from Auburn and more here in the preseason than they likely will once the season gets going. They'll simplify things a little more. Groves will be a third down guy and probably a special teams guy as well. He's got a burst of speed you just can't teach, but he is a bit undersized and sho it shows against the run. They didn't bring me in here just to be a pass rush specialist. I think they, they seen down the road that, hey, this guy could be an every down defensive end um, once he's groomed to be it. And um, I, I thank him for the opportunity that they gave me. You know, um, I wish I could have better capitalized on the opportunity. Groves is trying to add about 10 pounds. I'm trying to lose it. This was practice today, a very wet two-hour session. And you know what? It could be worse over the next couple of days as Faye moves closer to Jacksonville. The Jags may have to move indoors. I'll have to go ahead and take one more shot. At, you know, that bubble would be nice, you know. Uh, you know, Wayne, if you were listening. <laughs> uh, Mayor Payton, there'd be a nice bubble here. The city of Jacksonville could use it. We're helping get the message out, Coach. you got to have a bubble. Come on, NFL team, all this lightning they have around here. Got to do it. How about the injury front? Reggie Hayward is practicing, expects to play Saturday. Reggie Williams could be back on the practice field later in the week. More Jags all the time on CBS47.com. CBS47, your official Jags station. How about a little local golf? The Gate PGA Invitational over at Ponte Vedra Inn and Club wrapped up today. Brock Nell taking home the $5,000 first prize in a playoff. The Amelia Island Pro was six under par. And JU's Josh Kinsey was the low amateur in the event. And some with some baseball tonight, still waiting for the race to fold, and it just hasn't happened yet. Tampa manager Joe Madden a little red in the face after a bad call at first base. Gabe Gross would make the manager smile a little bit. Play of the day, Mark Tashira deep to right. Gross goes above the wall to make the catch. Tampa wins 4-2. Four a four-and-a-half game lead over the Red Sox. 11 games over the Yankees in the AL East. Best record in baseball. That's not bad. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brent, thank Brent. you, sir. Well, after the break, Mike is back with a final look at Faye.
Hi, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. Severe weather can hit at any time, including while you're sleeping. CBS 47's First Alert Weather Team is partnering with Midland Weather Radios to alert you if a bad storm is headed your way. Stop by a participating Publix and get a discount on one today. If a hurricane hit, would you be prepared? A Category 3 hurricane storm surge would be 10 feet high, well over my head. This hurricane season, trust the First Alert Weather Team. Gotta go. All makes and models. AD. Don't settle for less than you deserve. The anchors. And there's a look at uh, the seven-day forecast, and here's the radar screen and the projected path of uh, Fay, which Mike is keeping an eye on. And, of course, this thing could do just about anything once it gets back out over the Atlantic, except yeah. keep going out over the Atlantic, right. unfortunately. It's gonna get, yeah, it's going to get blocked and move back in, so it becomes an intensity forecast. has lost some organization in the last few hours, but it will continue to work its way out over the Atlantic and then curving back toward the first coast by about Thursday. We'll keep you updated. More on CBS 47 News this morning. Good night.